E aí galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World, mas, é, fazendo mais um vídeo de atualização do H64D, H64D, vamos para o site aqui na internet, é meu canal, é lógico, tem que fazer propaganda dele, mas vamos direto para lá, aqui no site do DCS, se, se você for na página do fórum, é... No fórum H64D Mini Atualizações, o CEO de vídeos do DCS, o Matt Egner, ele postou mais um vídeo de atualização do H64D. Mais um vídeo de atualização do H64D. Se você descer aqui na página... Espera aí. Beleza. É TSD básico. É, nesse vídeo instrutivo do H64D, exploramos o fundamento do display de situação tática TS, TSD. É uma página multi-display, bababá, É que negócio, pessoal. Acessa o site dele e dá uma lida aqui, para vocês em si inteirando, né? Que logo, logo, <risos> para quem não sabe, o pessoal do, do DCS hoje passou o H64D para final de janeiro. É, pessoal, não tá longe, não. Tá logo ali. <risos> Enquanto isso, o pessoal aprimora a aeronave. Melhor para nós, né? Todo mundo sabe que o lançamento do F-16 foi aquela caquinha, né? Aquela dor de cabeça que todo mundo estava tendo no começo, né? Vamos ver se eles acertam a mão nesse aqui agora. Eu vou passar o vídeo dele, porque eu já deixei ele pré-carregado aqui. Daquele esquema, pessoal. Vou deixar as legendas aqui para vocês dar uma lida lá. É, é, se inteirar do que ele está falando. Caso contrário, dá uma lida nesse artigo que pra, praticamente é o seguinte, toda vez que ele posta um vídeo, ele deixa toda a descrição do vídeo aqui lá nas atualizações do DCS. Copiou? Vamos ver o vídeo dele lá, porque o vídeo dele é longo. Opa! Vamos ver lá, porque o vídeo dele é longo e eu tenho de postar o vídeo ainda hoje ainda. Eu nem vou editar, só vou colocar uma capinha bonita e mandar para vocês ainda hoje. Que dia é hoje? 8 do 12. Deixa eu dar um play aqui, deixa eu ver se tá tudo ok. Legenda... Bora lá, pera aí. Video. We'll look at the basics of the tactical situation display. Depois eu vou tentar fazer algumas considerações se for necessário. Por isso acompanha aí, Matt Egner falando. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this AH64D video, we'll look at the basics of the tactical situation display or TSD. In later videos, we'll explore the route and point functions of the TSD. The TSD places your aircraft symbol, called the own ship, in the bottom third of the display, but the center option can be selected from R3 to center the aircraft symbol. This is from a top-down perspective, with the area in front of your aircraft symbol being in front of you, assuming a north orientation is not selected. To change the TSD scale, press the up and down arrows at R1 and R2. The TSD scale is listed between R1 and R2, and the measurement of each TSD grid square is shown in the top right corner. Note that not all scales may have aerial navigation charts. As we discussed in the flight page lesson, we can change the unit of measurement of kilometers or nautical miles from the set subpage. In addition to the TSD being centered on the own ship symbol, You may also press T2 to enter pan mode. When in pan mode, the TSD automatically enters freeze mode, which is indicated by the segmented box around the periphery and freeze being boxed at R4. Using the cursor slew control, you can now slew the map independently of the blue aircraft symbol. The white aircraft symbol, called the ghost ship, marks your slew center point. You can also toggle pan mode to norm at L6. In this mode, moving the TSD cursor to a TSD location on the map and then depressing the cursor button will center the map at that location. Selecting last pan at R5 will center the map at the previous location. To exit pan mode, press pan at T2 again. Pan can be a useful tool to change your map location far away from your location without having to change the TSD scale. To exit freeze mode, select R4 again. 
To the right of pan at T3 are the show functions. This page and its subpages allow you to customize the overlays of the TSD. By default, it will first enter navigation phase as indicated in the top center. However, you can toggle to the attack phase from B2. We can assign different TSD option selections between navigation and attack phases. We'll talk more about this in the TSD points video. At R4 is the HSI, or Horizontal Situation Indicator, selection. Upon selection, indicated by boxing the label, a compass rose in 5 degree small increments and 10 degree large increments is centered on the aircraft symbol. There are also cardinal marks at magnetic north, east, south, and west. To remove it, press R4 again. Below at R5 is the endurance selection. When enabled, the total mission endurance is displayed in the window in the bottom left of the display. This endurance value is the same total endurance value as on the fuel page. At R6, we can choose to display wind direction and speed. If less than 5 knots, calm is indicated. Moving to the left side of the TSD at L6 is the cursor information option. When enabled, the TSD cursor MGRS coordinate, elevation, and distance to your aircraft are displayed at the bottom. If CPG or pilot cursor are selected from L5, you can view the TSD cursor position of the other crew member. Later, when we add the fire control radar, or FCR, detected obstacle icons can be displayed when enabled in navigation phase, or FCR targets and obstacle icons can be displayed when enabled in attack phase. Later in the project, we'll be adding fire zones. After that happens, you'll be able to toggle on and off inactive zones from L3. Above at L2 is a toggle for waypoint data. When enabled, the waypoint data window in the bottom left corner of the TSD is displayed with the waypoint number, distance to waypoint, airspeed, and time to waypoint. It is worth noting that the waypoint data window is not displayed when the TSD is set to the attack phase. In its place, the option to display the current route is shown for the attack phase. The first show subpage is the threat show subpage at T5. However, we'll return to this later when we discuss TSD points. The other show subpage is the coordinate show subpage at T6. The items of interest are on the left side from L2 to L5. Control measures at L2 allow you to toggle on and off general control measure points. Friendly units at L3 allow you to toggle on and off friendly control measure points. Enemy units at L4 allow you to toggle on and off enemy control measure points. And plan targets and threats allow you to toggle on and off targets and threat points. This will make a lot more sense when we get to TSD points in the next video. Let's head back to the main TSD page by pressing show at T3. To the right of our aircraft magnetic heading is the present position window selection. When enabled, our aircraft MGRS, lat long, and elevation of feet is displayed in the window at the bottom of the page. Moving over to T5 is the coordinate page selection. We'll come back to this when we discuss TSD points. At T6 is the TSD Utility page. Important elements of this page include the ability to power the Doppler radar on and off at L6, setting system time and date from R3 and L4, toggle between Zulu and local time at R2, and being able to determine the condition at which the ASE page will automatically be displayed using the auto page functions at R1. Other non-interactive elements include windows for the inertial navigation unit position confidence accuracy, GPS satellites being used, and GPS key windows. Below the freeze bezel button is the cursor acquisition, or CAC, at R5. This will allow us to cursor select points on the TSD to be our acquisition or direct to source, but this will be a topic we'll discuss in later videos. In addition to cursor selecting an acquisition source using the TSD cursor, we can also press R6 to select it from the listing. 
In this example, we have the gunner site, or GHS, where the weapon seeker is looking for SKR, fixed ahead of us, where the TADS is looking, and coordinate. As you may recall from the IHADS lesson, the dots on the line of sight queue in the acquisition reticle mark the location of the selected acquisition source. We can think of the acquisition source as a look here indication. Along the bottom at B6 is the point selection, but this is a large topic for a later TSD lesson. And to left at B5 is the route selection, but this is also a topic for an additional TSD video. For a map at B4, we can adjust the TSD background. From L2, we can select the four backgrounds, digital map, aerial navigation chart, satellite, and stick with no map underlay. Below at L3, the scale can be selected. The color band option can be selected from L4 with any map except stick. In this case, we'll select digital with aircraft banding selected. Gray indicates ground level less than 50 feet below your altitude. Yellow indicates 50 feet below your altitude up to your current altitude. And red indicates any terrain at your altitude or higher. When elevation is selected, the map is composed of up to eight colors denoting elevation, independent of your aircraft altitude. Setting the option to none removes color banding. The contour selection L5 and the foundation features dated L6 are not available in this version. At T5, grid can be selected to display a grid over the TSD. Slope shading at T6 is automatically selected and can only be set to on at this time. The orientation of the TSD can be selected from R5. TrackUp orients the TSD to have the ground track of your aircraft towards the top of the TSD, and Heading Up orients to the aircraft's magnetic heading. North Up orients the TSD such that the magnetic north is always at the top center of the TSD. The TSD will be in a 2D view as indicated R6, however a 3D view is planned. Between B3 and B4 is the magnetic heading to reach your current waypoint. To the right at B3 is the Battle Area Management or BAM selection. We'll come back to this later when we add the Flight Data Link and the FCR. The Situational Awareness or SA is a Blue Force Tracker overlay, a secondary data link system that is not planned at this time due to sensitivity issues and a lack of reference data. At L1 is the instrument option. When enabled, several TSD options are filtered out, the HSI is displayed over the aircraft symbol, and the time option appears in the top left corner. Above the timer at T1 and T2 are options to start, reset, and stop the timer. Below at L2, we can select and enter the desired heading into the KU, and then have that heading bug appear on the HSI. From T6, we can select our instrument utility page and set our automatic direction finding or ADF radio navigation. At B6, we can power on the ADF system. At R1, you can toggle between ADF mode that provides a bearing to a non-directional beacon on the HSI and flight page along with a Morse code audio signal to identify the beacon and antenna mode in which you only hear the audio signal. You have five NDB preset channels between R2 and R6, and another five presets between L2 and L6. Once a channel is selected, pressing Tune at T5 tunes the ADF radio to that channel. When tuned, an NDB status window appears with a frequency, station identifier, and Morse code. You can also manually override a preset by selecting either the identification at B4 with a frequency at B5 and enter the desired NDB in the KU. Once entered, press Tune. Selecting the emergency frequencies at B2 and B3 will tune the ADF to those international distress frequencies. If the utility button at T6 is reselected, you'll return to the main instrument page. Because we powered on the ADF, we now have several additional options. The first is the Tone button at R4. Toggling this option to on will play a solid tone over the intercom to ensure that the ADF audio can be heard. 
The identity button, R5, is used to filter out background static to assist a crew in identifying distant or weak NDB Morse audio signals. Pressing test at R6 will cause the ADF pointer to swing 90 degrees from its current direction as an indication that the system is working correctly. If the pointer swings in a direction other than 90 degrees, it indicates a faulty circuit within the ADF system. The rate that the pointer returns to the currently tuned beacon indicates the relative strength of that signal. Along the left side at L3 is the frequency button. This allows you to manually tune any AM frequency between 100 kHz and 2199.5 kHz. The last frequency button at L5 allows you to toggle between the current ADF frequency and the previously tuned frequency. This concludes this look at the basic functions of the TSD. In later videos, we'll explore the point and route functions. Thank you for watching. É, é, parceiro, a coisa não vai ser fácil, não. Todo mundo sabe que o trem não vai ser fácil. <risos> ai, ai, ai. O senhor Matt Egna tá doido pra, pra deixar os cabelinhos do nosso fora, fi. É foda. Basicamente, pro vídeo não ficar muito longo, eu já vou encerrar aqui, pessoal. Ele explicou bem detalhadamente todas as funcionalidades. É, naquele esquema, tem de ler muito, pessoal. Vamos se preparando aí. Quando a máquina chegar, vai ser aquele terror. Só manual, 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 manual. Aí depois que a gente vai postar vídeo. A previsão deles é para lançar essa máquina no final de janeiro. Na última semana de janeiro. Até o Steam já, já colocou nessa data. Então, naquele esquema, pessoal. Não esquece de dar o joinha, não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo. Lembre-se bem, o YouTube não notifica ninguém, não. DCS Word. H64D. Novo vídeo, pessoal. Não esquece, não, pessoal. Valeu, fui!